The Little Robber Girl, a new audio drama by Deirdre DeWire, presented by Broken Crow in association with Garter Lane Art Centre and The Everyman. Episode 4, Sister Stories. While up on the surface, Matty, Arthur and Finn were fighting their way through waves, wind and fast approaching evening, down below them in the deep, a different type of struggle was happening. The sisters, were they fine? Not exactly. There was a definite chill in the stuffy air underwater as Mags and Maureen tried to figure out just how two sisters could get along in the tight space of a rickety old submarine. Ha! <laughs> I would have loved to have seen that. In the tight confines, the two sisters awkwardly drank tea from submarine issue metal cups. Any biscuits? Chocolate digestives. In that tin there over your head. Ta. How'd you find me, Maureen? You're not an easy person to track down, Max. Wouldn't want to be in my line of work. What line of work would that be? I'm a thief. I like to keep moving. I have a team of four lads and, uh, well, what about you, Maureen? Hmm? What have you been up to? Fifteen years? Feels like a lifetime. Oh, you know yourself, bits and bobs. I've become quite good at selling things. Things many people would find hard to sell. To the few people who'd be willing to buy them. That's why I had to find you, Mags. I have a buyer for the jewels. I think it's time they made us some money. I'd be a liar if I said I didn't think about those gorgeous diamonds from time to time. But how did you find me? Oh, you know, ask the right people, wait for the right answers. You're quite distinctive looking, Mags. Still got your long red hair after all these years. Hairy bikers travelling around with you and... I hear you've got a little girl, too. I'd like to meet her. What do you want, Maureen? To pull this off, I need another person, Mags. Someone I can trust. And do you think after all these years, that's me? You're the only person I trust in this whole world, Mags, and you know it. Are you still blaming me for losing the boat? Well, it was your fault. We lost everything that night. And tonight, we're going to try and get it back. I've been working on this plan for years. To get the gold that sank with the boat, I knew we'd need a submarine. And then, if we went at the Queen Tide when the cave is totally full of water, we could use the sub to get in and out of the cave and reclaim the gems. When I finally found this old sub for sale a few months ago, I knew the time had come. I just needed to find you. And here we are, huh? You've planned this to a T. Maybe you're off to getting sensible in your old age. So how are you proposing we split the hall when we find it? 50-50, Mags. Half for you and your girl, half for me. Sounds like ideal. But don't think this makes things right between us. I'm only here for the jewels, Maureen. I still don't trust you. Now, tell me how we're going to get the gold. While an uneasy truce was formed in the submarine, on shore, Mike and Sam had found a clue. Sam, I think I found out where Matty is. What? Where? I'm not sure exactly where she is, but... Do you see them people over there? They're organising a search party. A kid called Finn took his family fishing boat out at the crack of dawn. He left the note saying he and his new friend Matty would be back by 10 a.m. 10 a.m.? That was hours ago. On a boat, out at sea with a young fella called Finn. Oh, Matty. What was she thinking? Sure, she's never thinking. You know, don't doubt it, just do it. But why would she go out to sea on a boat, Mike? Unless she's looking for mags. Oh, Matty... Back on the boat, the sun had set, and Matty discovered just how cold an October night on the waves could be. I give you a hint. It's freezing. Finn was busy at the helm, and so, at the back, Matty consulted with Arthur. <gasps> Matty, freezing. Come here, me little artichoke. Have a snuggle up here on me lap. Isn't this the most exciting thing we've ever done? <laughs> There's something about the sea air, isn't there? Yeah, it's f f Freezing. Imagine how cold it would be in the war, Arthur. Boom. Huh. Matty, shh. What? 
was only saying. Shh, I hear, I hear engine sound. Listen. Your ears are sharper than mine. I can't hear Ant. It's down there, under the water. But it must be the submarine. Finn, Finn, we must be close. Arthur can hear the submarine. Can you see the island? Wait. Yes, there it is. I see it. There in front of them, lit by the full moon, bloomed a most inhospitable looking rock of an island. I'll turn on the boat's searchlights. Whoa, I've never been this close to Carrig Roan before. The jagged rock was as tall as a four-story building, and the cliffs were covered all over with seagulls' nests on little ledges. Those birds look huge. Do they look big to you, Matty? They look like birds to me. Can you not get any closer, Finn? No, I really don't think I can, Matty. There are loads of rocks just below the surface. We're just coming up to high tide now, so only the highest points of Carrigrone are above water. At low tide, those parts there become a rocky plateau. If I bring the boat in here, we'll get stuck, or worse, burst a hole in the bottom of the boat. I wonder where the cave is. I wonder which side it's on. How did you know that it wasn't just the seagulls bothering Arthur? How did you know it was engine noise? Oh, uh, we're very in tune, my dog and me. He, uh, has a special engine bark. Right? They rounded the corner and spotted the very seals the rock was named after. See, Carrick is the Irish word for rock. And Rowan is the Irish word for seal. Seals had lived on this rock for generations. Matty caught eyes with one of them, and she immediately heard their thoughts. Commotion! A boat! None come this close for years. Little humans looking at us. What do they want? That was a delicious fish. Is there a bit there, left at the back of my teeth, if I just poke at it with my tongue? Mm. The seal opened its mouth wide fishing about at the back of its jaw with its tongue for some leftovers and showing off its sharp teeth. Arthur, not used to seeing so many teeth, responded with a cacophony of barks. You can't blame him. He just got a little fright. (coughs) But blame him we must because Arthur's little outburst disturbed the eerie peace of the island and began to attract some unwanted attention to the boat. So much noise from a tiny hairy thing. The peace of our island disturbed by the boat there and the underwater boat below. Orla won't like this. Not one bit. Hush, Arthur. Shush. Shut it. Nan's definitely here. I just heard that seal wandering about an underwater boat below. Andy mentioned something called Orla. What did you say? You heard? Oh, I thought you were back at the front. Nothing. Just talking to Arthur. Talking to Arthur is one thing, Matty. Talking to him about hearing his seal's thoughts is quite another. What are you going on about? Nothing. (coughs) Fine. (coughs) He thinks I should tell you. I know he's your best friend, Matty, but he's still a dog. Yes, but I can understand him. That's what a lot of pet people think. No, this is different. I can sort of... Hear animals' thoughts? Yeah, right. And I'm a fearsome pirate warrior. Have been able to since I was a little kid. Once I make an eye contact with them, their thoughts kind of tune in. Like a radio. Sure. You don't believe me? Why should I? You're not the most honest person I've ever met, Matt. That may be, but this is true. I can prove it. Whisper something to Arthur. Something I couldn't possibly know. Then he'll tell me. Are you trying to make a fool of me? No, of course not. Do it. Fine. Come here, Arthur. Okay, so tell me, Art. What's Finn's deep, dark secret? Matty, Finn's name is Finnegan Finnerty McFinneus. Finnegan Finnerty McFinneus, eh? What? How, How did you... Did you overhear me? No, I told you. I can hear animals' thoughts. Now do you believe me, Finn? Or should I say, Finn again? That is so cool. I don't tell people about it normally in case they think it's weird. Oh, right. Uh, well, I, I mean, it is weird. Uh, super weird. Uh, but in a cool way. And what's wrong with being weird anyway? Uh? What did he say? He said he knew you were a good boy. Oh, thanks, Arthur. Uh-huh. Now tell me animal mind reader. Uh, What did the seal say? 
Did it say where the treasure cave is? Just talk at the submarine down below. Give me a sec. I'll have another Oh, list. am I hungry again? Or maybe I'm just bored. Where will I find a fish with the underwater boat below? Or I will be cranky with the disturbance. And with that, the seal heaved themselves over to the water's edge and slipped into the water. I think the cave is near here. But there's something else. That seal keeps mentioning something or someone called Orla. Deeper down below the way, Mags and Maureen were recovering after an altercation of their own. Not with each other, but with a huge, giant, enormous something. Mags, are you okay? Are we in one piece? I'm okay. I'm just shook. I, I think everything is fine. One propeller might be slightly damaged. I think we're still watertight. What in the high heavens was that thing? It looked like an octopus. But huge. Three times bigger than the sub. It seemed like it was trying to open the hatch at the top. Well, we'd have been goners if we'd opened the hatch. We'd have all drowned. What have you gotten us into, Maureen? Oh, I just don't know. Mags, when we were getting the gold, did you see the old boat lying there at the bottom of the sea? I did. It might not have been your carelessness that scuttled our boat all those years ago. I did anchor it carefully that night. I know you never believed that, but I did. Well, now I'm starting to think I didn't really have the full story. I'm sorry, Mari. I'm sorry for doubting you and blaming you. Thanks, Mags. And come here. Do we still have the hold of the gold? Yeah, it's still there in the gripper claw. I can't believe we kept hold of it despite the tangle. Now, if we pull in the mechanical arm now, we'd be laughing. We got the gold. I know there's still the gems to get, Maureen. That was a close one. We barely got out alive. I've been dreaming of those gems for years, but you've got your little girl to be worrying about. Well, what do you think, Max? Will we go on? Or will we go back? If something were to happen to me, I think I've got to go back, Maureen. I don't blame you, Mags. I know what it's like to lose your family. And I don't intend to do it again. You were always the sensible one. Will we head up to the surface together? I'd like that, Maury. I'd like that very much. And with that, they pushed the throttle and the submarine started to ascend. Back up on the boat, Arthur had sensed something strange and frightening moving below. What's he saying now? Calm down. Calm down, Art. What? Where? Finn? He thinks there's something under the boat. What? Is it the submarine? No. Not a machine. Says he can smell something. Not like anything he's ever smelled before. But it's big. What? Matty, I knew this would be dangerous. People have seen all sorts of things in the water around here. I'm getting us out of here. But before Finn could get back to the helm, the boat gave a strange kind of quiver and shook. And then, in the gleaming darkness, a large tentacle slunk over the side of the boat and began slithering over the deck towards them. It looked like the coiled back end of a snake, but it had sort of suckers on it as it slithered nearer. What's going on? What's that? It headed for Arthur. The little dog barked fiercely at it, but the thing still slinked closer and closer until, fast as lightning, it wrapped its curled end around Arthur's little paw and, with a flick, tossed the dog into the black water and shot back off the boat into the Arthur! sea. Arthur! Arthur! Matty rushed to the edge of the boat, and as Finn turned around, he saw Matty pull off her runners and life jacket and dive like a gull into the dark water. Matty! No! Oh my goodness! Finn gazed at the ripples where Matty had just vanished. He felt helpless, but only for a second, because then put into practice the McFinneus safety plan. His parents had planned for every eventuality, even person overboard. Okay, Matty, hang on! Right, step one, engine off. Check. Step two, searchlights on. Check. Step three, rescue rope. Check. Life boy. Check. Blankets, check. Oh, Matty, where are you? 
Now I know this seems a terrible moment to take a break. I'm afraid we must. Time is pressing on, and we'll have to catch up in the next episode. Cheerio! You have been listening to the voices of Jackie Kelleher, Killian Jacob, Nicholas Kavanagh, Aideen Wilde, George Hanover, Deirdre Dwyer, Michael Power, and Joe Marr. The illustrator for episode four was Grace Enimaku. For more information about the cast and crew, go to deirdredwyer.com or brokencrow.ie. This project was only possible thanks to the support of the Arts Council, Waterford City and County Council Arts Office, Imagine Arts Festival, and you, the listener. <laughs>